all right so good afternoon everyone sorry it's the lunch time but i'm going to take away 15 minutes of your time for something very interesting so special thanks to horiba in the first place hbx for this um, marvelous platform for all of us to share our views and ideas of course eminent hematopathologist i should say the expert comments add a lot of value in our lives day to day activity lovely to meet all of you in person so finally it has been a overwhelming two days and i'm going to carry a lot of memories with me from here now i'll start with a word named covid covid for the past two years has changed our life completely we all know that how because it has given us a new norm what is this new norm social distancing respiratory uh, norms and then mask and hand hygiene etc 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 but there is one more new norm in place which i would like to call digitization of morphology now we all know morphological assessment of the peripheral smear typically ideally gold standard still lies by doing a microscopy and where we need a human intervention and here in digitalization as such also we will need human intervention but it's a new era altogether so we recently got introduced to um Stella Vision I don't know whether I am allowed to take the name of the platform but this is what we got before Stella Vision we got hello we've been going through the brochures lying on the tables it's the entire system which has a track system p8000 software two beautiful instruments 2500 1500 slide maker it's a lavish big instrument but it's incomplete if you don't have a digital morphology analyzer along with it so when we were settled with the hello system we realized that we need digital morphology system which we got but we were not sure whether to use it or not actually we were quite apprehensive should we or should we not because there are a lot of problems which i heard about so unless verified it's very difficult to put that to use correctly this is how our agenda started and we came out with all the guidelines we checked our references be cap and nabl and uh, cap accredited laboratory it was very important for us to get a thorough validation done before actually we can start putting to use the digital morphology platform so for that we undertook a study of course that has to be done but why do we want that is a question which needs to be answered first there's a lot of pressure to do more with less as a stand alone lab we have shortage of skill manpower so that that's one thing which i'm struggling every day in and out there's a lot of demand about the turnaround time lab efficiencies the faster service to the physicians it's a whole, whole long list ending up with a traceability and the quality control and a conviction that we have given the correct report to a patient without losing out on any important cell with that conviction we moved along yes it's a very heavy slide because this is the expectation from the management where there is improved efficiency promoting quality improving connectivity proficiency enhancement lot of stuff goes into it so with a big agenda in mind we conducted a study before we conducted a study we wanted to understand how does it work so digital morphology normally works there is a beautiful screen and a beautiful instrument but what do we do with that digital imaging automated we scan the slides what does the scanner do is it scans the portion of the slide identifies the mono layer area locate the cell now after locating what it captures the image now there are specific uh, magnification 50x 100x oil it's all pre classified cell it knows what to identify the cell as and then it generously displays the cell on the screen and tells you see this is the cell and now your life is easy this is the concept behind digital morphology so the aim of the study it was a big study it's still going on i am still not satisfied with that because it's 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 a huge um, conviction that is required behind it yes of course we want to get rid away of the inter observer and intra observer consistency that's what we wanted to bring actually there is a lot of discrepancies between two people so we wanted to get rid of it we wanted to uh, Uh, retrieve the previous image which currently with a slide it's very difficult to get the previous image we want to bring standardization of quality that's one thing you give a slide to one hematologists give to the other there's always a difference of opinion so we wanted to get rid of that 
Then also enhance sensitivity. Now this is where the biggest challenge is and few interesting things which happened to us over the course of period which I'll share with you. Of course, so there was a clear aim in our mind. We wanted to evaluate the digital automation by comparing the result with the manual microscopy. That becomes our gold standard and that has to be done. We have to define the review criteria of the slide based on the validation analysis. So we should also be clear as to after validation, what are we supposed to do? Also, time is an important factor because the thing which I heard about uh, digital microscopy is that it's a time consuming effort. So be very careful with that. So that's one thing we wanted to validate. Also, the entire workflow, we get around 1500 CVCs, not that big as Dr. Sukesh gets, but for us, it's a huge challenge because the turnaround time goes to one hour or maybe one and a half hour, not more than that. So the workflow has to be changed accordingly. Uh, so these were the aim uh, in the mind. So what we did is we picked up the routine samples. Now these are the samples which are run on 2500, 1500 with our marvelous criteria, review criteria, reflex criteria, repeat criteria, all in place incorporated. This is the uh, ISLH guidelines. We have devised our own rules. Our manual review criteria basis, our lab devised uh, criteria and learnings that we have come across with. We also incorporated the instrument flag and alarms. So putting all that intelligence into one, which I presented in our last uh, session about how we amalgam amalgamated all the review criteria. We have our own slide review criteria now. So, uh, so we ran all the samples in that. Now, uh, abnormal results, which were flagged by the analyzer, and that indicates slide review are the cases that we picked up primarily. And of course, we had to do a manual microscopy. We did our conventional microscopy and we, we made our diagnosis and differential and RBC analysis, platelet, everything was looked into it. Now, the slides which went through manual microscopy were labeled, properly barcoded, and then loaded on the digital microscopy analyzer or the scanner and reassessed after the pre-classification of the cell is done by the instrument, which means we did not do anything. We allowed the instrument to classify the cell and serve it to us. And that is when our pathologists, trained pathologists on the system verified whether it's doing a good job or not. So the cases pre-screened by the automated cell counter were then intended. Now, this is a criteria. It has to follow the normal standard workflow of the hematology laboratory. So that's what we maintain throughout. Now, this is the long list. This is our review criteria, which we had devised, improvised, created over the years, and we follow it for our slide review criteria. I'm not going in detail, but that, that's a quite long list and many more to it. So uh, what we found is about, what we pick, did is we actually picked up all the review criteria. Like uh, we review the slide when atypical lymphocyte alarm is more than three, NRVC is present, hemoglobin is less than seven, more than 18, monocytes is high, monocytosis more than 20, RDW is high. So we picked up all those typical cases because we were assuming that the normal CBC will come as normal by cell vision. So we tried to focus on the exemption ones where we will try to review the slide more. But what we also found it consistently performed very well. The concordance rate is mentioned on the right hand side, which is for more than eight, uh, more than three atypical lymphocytes. The concordance of differential was around 85%. And subsequently, if we go down, overall concordance was around 75%, which means what abnormal cells or abnormal smears we have seen, there was a concordance of 75%. It was able to classify and give us a good report in 75% cases. That's what it means. But there were problems. Problems we faced when it came to basophil count, which was more than 2%. There was a sensitivity, which was a challenge. Concordance was less. Platelet count, again, came out as a big issue where the platelet count less than 1.5 lakh. We could see a very low correlation. These were the first observations. But uh, final results of accuracy. What we also do it is we, uh, for the 250 samples that we had run, we got the entire dump of the data, which includes all the parameters which got run. We got a data comparison, which is around 60,000 cells or objects is what we analyzed. And it's a beautiful calculation, which talks about how many segmented neutrophils were there, pre-classified and after verified pre-classified. The first column is the pre-classified cells, which is what the uh, scanner has given. And second one is the pre-classified cells, which were actually correctly identified by it. So what we realized is that 
Segmented neutrophil has a very good co correlation with a 99.9% .9 sensitivity. Eosinophil 98%, basophil 95%, lymphocyte 99%, monocyte 9%. Beautiful. So differential count more or less worked absolutely wonderful. Yes, there was a challenge when it came to band neutrophil, which was just over 65 then we have plasma cells, which it was not able to pick up well. It categorized in some other category. Uh, immature granulocyte in the form of metamyelocyte was 66%. Blast cells, again, there was a challenge at times, but sometimes it behaved very well. Erythroblast, NRBCs, which we uh, found, again, a challenge where the correlation was not going beyond 80%. So we kept a threshold of at least 80% to begin with. But it was very good when it came to smut cells and... Artifacts also, it was able to pick up giant thrombocytes. So in good number of cases, we were quite happy with the result that we got. But we also looked at the uh, segmented neutrophil lymphocyte monocyte where the concordance rate was 99.8%. But when we also put along the band form and the eosinophil, the concordance rate dropped a little bit to 97%. One thing was very interesting. There was a possibility that we were able to go probability and we were actually missing out on blast or abnormal cells, which was very less in number. Beauty with the digital scanner or analyzer was you run the sample on the analyzer and you will never miss out a cell. The sensitivity is remarkable. And that's the bottom line which I want to bring out here is that it might categorize in a different bucket. But the onus, the onus lies on the hematopathologist to review the screen, review the bucket, review each and every cell, get satisfied, drop or change the buckets, but you will not miss out on any abnormal cell. And when we have a lot of challenges in identification, what we do is we run the sample on the cell vision and we review it, we see it again, and we find we had to change our diagnosis at times. So a lot of help during our way, uh, during this entire validation. So this was one thing, but uh, now we had to compare it with a presentation or some study which has been conducted. So CRADS is a known entity, Dr. CRADS et al. has done a lot of studies when it comes to the digital morphology, and he has published a lot of data. He also spoke about manual microscopy, which is coming positive for uh, immature granulocytes, may come positive in cell vision, but can also come negative in cell vision. So there is a probability it may not pick up also, but the onus completely, completely lies on the, the screener, the, the verifier, the one who's going to ascertain the correctness of the report. So um, this is how it went. And this is again, Kratz and all, et al where uh, they have the correctness uh, mentioned as 92% for segmented neutrophils, more or less corroborating with our finding. But yes, weakness lies with blast, weakness lies with the eosinophil detection, with banned neutrophils. Except for all these cells, the concordance and the pre-classification verification stands very good. Also coming to a very good attribute which we picked up is about the advanced RBC concept. Now what is this? It, advanced RBC talks about the size, the roundness, the size, the shape of the central pallor, the distribution notches at the border, and then it henceforth categorizes the RBCs as well. Also we found the cystocytes and the teardrop cells, the sensitivity was very high, specificity was low. I don't have numbers right now to talk about it, but this is our finding as well. Stomatocyte sickle cells had a very high sensitivity, so it was not even missing out any sickle cell, which we, our new pathologists, tend to miss out at times. RBC agglutination, malaria parasite, well, that's the point of debate because uh, it's been um, very difficult at times where the index when the parasitemia is very low, which is less than 1.1 person, there is a very low probability it might pick up. But we have also seen smears on the thick smear. We have run thick smears also, and we were able to pick up malaria. So it's a beautiful system when it comes to picking up malaria parasites either. Uh, platelet aggregates, the sensitivity is low. So that's a challenge we normally have. We have a lot of debates about how platelets are sensitive for us. Overall, optical will pick it up or not, Dr. Shukesh will definitely come out with something which can pick up the aggregates as well. 
individual counts, but here there is a challenge. Yes, you can go and hunt for a platelet aggregate, but that, that is something which we still have to rely on other means. Challenge lies with neonatal samples. It's, it's not very correct when it comes to differential. Limitation also lies in cases of leukemia because uh, immature granulocytes do not come out that well. Dysplastic cells, intracellular inclusions, the sensitivity found to be pretty low. So uh, as time is, again, a very crucial factor in this case, uh, it was very important for us to look at the turnaround time as well. So, but what we realized finally at the end of the day, uh, um, the time consumption is more or less the same when we run the sample on the analyzer, uh, the scanner versus the manual activity. Overall, we did this entire exercise just to pick up, is there a delay? As that was a big apprehension in our minds before we started the study, we found that it worked pretty well and our manual microscopy took more time as compared to the digital one. So there were a lot of advantages which we found. Beauty is remote review. So we had anybody report the scanned category, pre-classified category of cells from anywhere. That's very beautiful uh, uh, advantage of this. There is reduced eye strain, there is reduced fatigue, it's there available on the screen. You can zoom in, annotate, you have a lot of functions, you can actually play around with that. Cells are easily traceable, easily retrievable. You can use this entire library preparation that you have for competency, training competency for the pathologist team, the technologist. So that's what we have been putting it to use now, sharing those CAP pictures, the pictures that we get for CAP proficiencies and from the Cella Vision to share it with all our group of pathologists. So it becomes a very good, interesting training tool as well. Now, one thing has come is the standardization which has come across. Now you know what you are reporting. There's no variation, no inter-observer variability that we have seen coming up. Faster reviews, overall it gives a good impression and uh, it's quite acceptable for the normal WBC and also sensitive for the abnormal cells. The pre-classification of RBC works wonderfully well when it comes to the teardrop, the schistocytes and uh, any inclusion that we have come across in RBCs, I think we have a very, very satisfactory uh, feedback regarding that. So we had few comparison which we did with literature reviews and there are few discrepancies, but I think onus lies on the laboratory which is standardizing the process, standardizing the entire validation process. And for us, it worked really well, except for the limitations which I just discussed. So we had an entire workflow of um, review of CBCs changed because we have a new member in the team now. So we run a CBC on the analyzer. There is a middleware, which is P8000 on Hello System. So we also have created a block and auto-verified channel, which means uh, there are, as per the rules that we have decided, if it works well, then it goes. the result goes to LIS, and uh, it goes through the pathologist, and we approve it basis. We review the entire uh, data on the CBCs. Those which do not get filtered out by the review criteria are blocked. Now, these blocked cases either go to the rerun reflex or they go to the reflex slide review. Rerun goes to the instrument back, comes out, and when it goes to the reflex slide review, it goes to the digital morphology. You have the manual review done through the screen. We also do manual uh, microscopy, which is also a parallel thing. We have not yet stopped it. Uh, and then it goes for typing and approval. So this is a very beautiful system which we have relaxed as our review percentage of the slide currently is around 25%. During rains and all, it goes up to 50, 51, 55%, but now it's 25%. With this system, we are able to still release 10, 20% of more cases easily without looking into it. Platelet becomes a huge problem still. So I'm not denying the inefficiency shown by the system when it comes to the platelet aggregate. So that repeat still remains and manual review still remains through microscopy. So conclusion, uh, accuracy is very good. It's better than individual cells manual differential. Inter-observer variability is minimal, potential labor saving, improved TAD. So a lot of good advantages which we have come across. Few cases for the ones who have not got introduced to uh, the screens and how it works. 
So we had a 68 year old male, abdominal distension for two weeks, fever off and on. CBC showed 9 gram hemoglobin, TLC was normal, platelet was 61,000, peripheral smear shows this. You annotate and you know, you can find a all rod, this belongs to myeloblast series, all rods. So it gives a very good vision. In microscope, you are probably not able to identify a lot of inclusion and granules, but here in this case, you are able to zoom and you can actually pick up. Five-year-old male, fever with chills, hemoglobin 13, TLC 7,800, platelet count low, peripheral smears shows a differential, normocytic, normochromic. We were able to pick up falciparum malaria with an index which was very low, actually 0.7%, but it was beautifully seen on the screen. Third case again, 55-year-old male, fever with chills, Similar kind of a picture, and we were able to pick up schizons of Vivex. Why I picked up two cases of malaria is that I have heard a lot. This instrument or this scanner is not good for malaria. There are a lot of debates about it. But we were easily able to pick up schizons as well. This is the thick smear. Categorization was incorrect, but we were able to put it in the right bucket. 11-year-old female. Complaining of fever on and off, there is weakness, past history of ALL with relapse, underwent bone marrow biopsy. So what we did is we ran bone marrow samples also. It was able to pick up and identify cells. It's right there before us and we were able to label this case beautifully well. Point that I'm trying to bring here is the ease of reporting. You don't have to struggle too much. Fifth case is about a 36-year-old male, pancytopenia, CBC... All the parameters are on the lower side. There is pro myelocyte 30%, myeloblast 7%, myelocyte 6%. We did uh, flow cytometry also. This uh, classification came out beautifully well. We were able to identify the cells. We were, uh, we finally labeled it as APML case by flow cytometry. So 62 year old female with persistent lymphocytosis uh, CBC 11 is the hemoglobin, then TLC is uh, 10,000, peripheral smear shows very beautiful cell. Turned out to be hairy cell leukemia. If you can identify the hairs, I probably would have missed this out in the microscope. But this screen will just not allow you to miss out any abnormal cell. In this case, particular case, the counts were very high, but otherwise we will not miss out. A 63-year-old male with the past history of multiple myeloma, myeloma was diagnosed a long time back and has received chemotherapies. So came back to us, we were able to pick up this in the peripheral smear. And this was labeled as plasma cell, so very little effort to label it as plasma cell leukemia because we also did flow for this patient. 63-year-old male, uh, again, CLL, uh, known case of CLL, pro-lymphocytes were 18% in this patient. And this is a very interesting patient because there were a lot of samples coming for this patient. And it was very easy for us to just look at it and get a classified um, categorization, reclassify it, and release it as pro-lymphocytic CLL case. So, so on, so forth. We had a 70% blast in one of the patient, and it turned out to be AML. Very clearly seen. It's a very good picture for the pathologist also to learn, use it for training purpose as well. So overall, this is the entire feedback about how the presence of a digital scanner in the team along with the analyzer adds on to the value by easing out our lives, definitely. But the ownership completely lies on us as to how we want to describe a cell, categorize it, and diagnose, make the final diagnosis. That's all from my side. Thank you so much.